Said to say my mind is gone. Said to say my feelings lost. Life and price tags bad. People change for the cause. Hey, what's good, guys? I'm Aaron. And I'm Too Vicious. And this is 811's Cousins Corner. Corner. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. This is our first episode, guys. <laughs> first episode. Welcome, 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 man. It's exciting. It took a lot to get us in here, for real. Um, shoot, man. Let's just, let's just get in this stuff. Yeah, let's get who we are, You know what I'm saying? First off, I'm Aaron. Let's, let me just let you know. I'm Aaron Better. Um, you can see, you can find me on Instagram at Train Better. Uh, I, you know, I'm a Leo. I ain't gonna sit here and say I'm a Leo. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to my Leo game birthday coming up pretty soon. You know what I'm saying? And I'm Two Vicious. You can you can find me on Two Vicious Eleven on IG, Snapchat, anything, Twitter. I'm on everything. So, what was the best vacation you've been on? Oh, oh, uh, shoot! Best vacation I've been on. Honestly, it's this recent one for my brother's uh, for Naughty's wedding. Yeah. And also some stuff, because you know I ain't never um I ain't actually for those who don't know for those who don't know I ain't never been on a plane I'm shoot about to be 29 this year so this is my first time hopping on a plane it's crazy but yo Vegas is wild yo, Vegas is wild I'm trying really to good. go yeah. yeah I know you just came back how was your vacation my vacation was good I had a vacation with my brother and sister our very first Royster uh, vacation hey, Royster's yeah hey, shout out shout out you know we sorry. had to turn up in Virginia we definitely did it was so random like we didn't plan anything but to go to the beach but we end up spending a ton of money so i'm just saying <laughs> you know vacation you do plan Facts. because that's what it goes i think we all spent our rent money a ton. <laughs> <laughs> no it'd be like that like it was just so random even though i like random stuff but that was something we should have thought that for <laughs> no i ain't even gonna lie that's how i felt about vegas like i ain't gonna start like and being out there was wild. Like, it was just so many. It was it, one. It was just different from being here. You know, we're here in Baltimore. So just for all y'all don't know, we here in Baltimore and everything. Um, but you know, being here in Baltimore and then going out over west, it's just like it's the atmosphere different, the mm-hmm. heat different. Yeah. Um, but it was also the people there. The energy with just the people was a lot different from being here in Baltimore. You know what I'm saying? How was the food? Food thing, and I ain't gonna stop. It was, <laughs> no, let me stop. Let me stop lying though. One thing I will say over west, y'all can't fry chicken. Let me just say y'all. Y'all fried chicken was not banging. It ain't had no seasoning on that sucker, y'all. For real. <laughs> It was it was lacking on the fried chicken. Oh, the crisp was good. Go, uh, what was that spot? Um, oh, I cannot remember the name of that spot. It was across the street from the. Um, so I stayed at the Caesar. I stayed at the Caesar Palace. Okay. Um, crazy nice. So that joint is huge. No, the Caesar's Palace is huge. It's got this one spot over there on some real stuff. It's like when you walk, walk. It's like a mall park. So when you walk through, mm-hmm. it literally look out. Look, look, looks like outside. Like one morning. Yeah, no joke. One morning. That's lit. Yeah, look, look, one morning, <laughs> one morning I had got up and I had smoked, right? And I was walking through. My fault, I was I was about to go outside to smoke, right? And I was walking through and I couldn't find a um I couldn't find an exit out of mm-hmm. the hotel because it was so huge. It's mm-hmm. like literally like a basically like a, a little town in there. I was walking through the one part and I didn't realize I had walked into the mall, but it had velvet ropes. So you know you just don't be paying attention to stuff. I just walked around the ropes. Mm-hmm. As soon as I walked through, I'm like, dang, yo, when the heck I get outside? I was like, yo, when the heck I get outside? And then I noticed it was really just a nice painting. I'm like, yo, this is, <laughs> I was like, that's crazy. So, there's no reason why I should have walked in there and felt like the temperature changed. It was a bit. <laughs> it was crazy nice. So I didn't want to make it seem like I ain't never been nowhere in my life, yo. But it was really nice being in there, almost um, some real stuff. Uh, but like you said, it was mad expensive. Like, yo, they wanted like $5 for, a two, for like a little, little soda, yo. No. Mm-mm. Yeah, like the little twenty ounces. No, I'm not doing that. I had to. I had to drive the car. Uh-uh. Well, Virginia food was banging. That Southern Kitchen. Uh-huh. Ooh, and them grits. I'm so addicted. I'm so addicted to grits. Now. Where'd you go? We went to um, 
I couldn't even, I can't pronounce the place. It's like two UK or something like that. But we end up staying at the Holiday Inn, some slight. But I'm telling you, that Southern food, like everywhere we went, the food was good. Right. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> but I'm telling y'all, y'all got like, Virginia got a little carnival on the boardwalk. It's like about this small, and y'all is overpriced. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and all the rides kept breaking down. No, y'all need to oh, take that. That's so y'all, y'all go get tickets. That's Don't risky. pay for no unlimited headband, head wrist thing. <laughs> you hear that, man. Y'all need to work on that. So, I mean, what was your favorite? You said the grits was banging? The yeah. grits was banging. I fell in love with the grits. I don't even, I'm not even a grit person. But then, mm. yes. You don't like grits? No. But I definitely had to try uh, oh, yeah, shrimp and grits. And grits. it was off the hood. So, you don't eat grits at all? You just I don't eat cream of wheat? I eat cream of wheat. Oh, okay. All right. I'd rather have cream of wheat. It's one or the other. You know what I'm saying? Shrimp. It's one or the other. You know what I'm saying? Wait, cream of wheat with shrimp? Yes. Cream oh. of wheat with shrimp is good. She bugging y'all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't never heard of that, yo. That's crazy. That's crazy. What? It's good. <laughs> you better try it. Just like pineapple and pizza. Oh no, that's not that don't go on pizza, y'all. y'all yes, it does. Yo, that's dead. Yes, it does. That's, no, yo. Pineapple pizza and that's... chicken, what? All right, so look. You vegan. Let me tell you what happens when you do that, right? You completely ruin the dish. No, you don't. You need to go to trash. Have you ever tried pineapples yes. with pizza? You know I managed Papa John's. You know I managed the Papa John's. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I forgot I had, that. I had to try all those pizza. That's a, that's something was nasty. No, it wasn't. It was. We're making it. <laughs> all right, so the fact that it's sweet, and then it's got like, it's mushy. It's, it's mushy. Like, I'm going to be very honest with you. It's mushy, and then you put it with like, like ham. Like, ew. Well, I don't eat ham. I don't eat pork. I'm not pork either. So what you put it with? Chicken? Chicken. Even worse. Even worse. Bull crap. Can't, I mean, if you do that Sweet and savory is what is that? Period. <laughs> That's not for me, man. You got to, you got to keep that to yourself. What was the worst vacation you've been on? Worst? Oh man, the, the this New York trip, my man CJ took me on. Like it was lit. Like the vacation wasn't worse, but it wasn't. It wasn't that. One of the beaches he took us to in New York. I don't care how y'all feel about this New York. It had mad flies. Like I mean, on New York had beaches. Right. Right. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> the beaches belong in New York. Right. Had mad flies and these flies was biting me, fam. Like flies bite. Flies bite. Wee wee. You know what I'm saying flies bite. But yeah, that was that was my, that was my worst one. I can't lie. What was yours? My worst vacation was I can't I can't lie. It was one of our family vacations. We drove all the way <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> We drove for family reunions. I'm sorry. We drove all the way to South Carolina. Everything felt brushed. Like the moment we got there, it was like this family thing, this, this family thing, this family thing, and it was just like, oh, bro, I'm tired of doing family stuff. I just want to lay in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, y'all, y'all done burnt all my energy. I'm good, yeah, like Is this one of ones we just got here. All right, guys, we're gonna head on to our slight musical break real quick. We're tune back in just about five minutes. <laughs> New beats every week, buy one get three free, only on privateboy.co. Said to say my mind is gone, said to say my feelings lost, life and price tags bad, people change for the cause. Welcome back, welcome back, everybody. Back. Man, shout out to DJ Private Boy for on the tunes, for real. man. Just, just turning it up, man. So just like, oh, hey, shout out, man. Shout out. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> As y'all can see, man, we back here. You know, we got our drink here. You know what I'm saying? Got our little drink. Um, well, we're gonna start off with our topic of today. As y'all see, it's gonna be heartbreaks, for real. Um, we're gonna just start off real quick. Tell us, I'm actually going off real. So what was your first heartbreak? My first heartbreak was my daughter's father. That it really felt like a heartbreak though. Like I remember finding out about him and his now baby mother, second baby mother. And 
<laughs> and like he had just came home from jail and I thought he was gonna come home to me, but he came home to her. Oh. And when I found that out, and then I actually found out, I didn't find out about her till she got pregnant. And she hit me up and was like, he gonna take care of my baby, pay my bills, this and the third. And I said, you just wanted to stay somebody else's baby mom like that, like for real. But she both of y'all favorite people. Now at this at this time at this point, <laughs> like he was like real. She was real pumped that she took it from me. And after that, I hit him up like I wrote for you, I was there for you, I waited for you. He was like, well, you ain't the only one who was there for me. So apparently, he was. Oh, that was happening uh, both of you. Yeah. Oh, he was, he was on both of y'all. He was, yeah, he was messing with her before he even got locked up, and I didn't know about it. And I was already like nine months pregnant. So when he came home, I had already had our child. When all that happened, I uh, was on the floor. Like I dropped down to the floor. I started crying. I clenched myself. It literally felt like a real heartache. Mm. All right. Oh man, that sucks. Man. I'm sorry. Who was the first person that broke your heart, though, cousin? Um, now, shoot, let me be real. The first person that broke my heart. Mm. Heartbreak for me. It probably will, honestly, like, if I was to really say it, it was probably my marriage. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, it's probably my marriage, my ex-wife. Um, let's be real here. Like, for me, it really got to a point because I was so ready to be a father, uh, be that man and things like that. So when that didn't work out, um, yeah, it just hurt, you know what I'm saying? Like, same thing, you know, she cheated. Um, and for me, I'm going to just be very honest with you guys and everybody else. Uh, cheating doesn't necessarily, for me, in, in marriage, it doesn't always mean it. And sometimes people think love is like this, this, like this beautiful thing. Like yeah. It's always something like, yeah. it's supposed to be real love and roses and stuff like that. Is out. Love is the honest and real stuff. If any, honestly, love is really not a, a beautiful thing. Love, it takes a lot of hard work and sometimes it can be really ugly. Mm. Um, and so I wasn't really, I wasn't really... I was ready, I'm gonna say this, I was ready to stay even past that, but it was the person that I felt as though she was becoming that made it really hard to be with. Yeesh. And um, when you change who you are, I think it's really hard to go back, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you, you don't, especially you don't communicate that to your partner, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, past that, you know, we became, you know, we became friends and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, we might not get along all the time now, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but that was definitely something that was really hard for me to, Get over. Now I think I didn't even face it like the first like year. To be honest, mm. you know, a lot of times you think you'd be over somebody or you think yep. you know some stuff. Yeah. And the whole time it's like, oh dang, I really wasn't over it. But it took a lot of maturity to really sit here and uh open up and be honest about certain stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and really face your demons and face things that you know you could have been could have been wrong in situations. And that's funny because me and my daughter's father are close to like we are like that's that's my homie. That's my best friend. I ain't gonna say we close. We are. <laughs> me, me and her, me and me and her father are close. We are. Like yeah, that's that's that's, that's definitely my homie. So I didn't actually see us even being friends, let alone oh, <laughs> like for what he did to me. So that's kind of crazy. I did not know. That's wild. That's wild. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Um, but at the same time, you know, you just gotta let that things drop. You know, when you really love somebody, um, you kind of look past. And especially when you have children, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially when you have children. That's the you, hardest part. You kind of got to look past a lot of things um, and really get into, you know, it being about the child, not necessarily it being about what they did to hurt you. And sometimes, to be honest with you, and this is something that I actually really did learn in, in that situation, it's not always a personal thing on you. It's not always you, you know what I'm saying, why people do certain things. Um, people can be missing things in life. Uh -huh. People can feel certain, certain ways in life. And with that being said, with people feeling some sort of ways in life and, and, and things like that, you you gotta understand you gotta take people where you are. Where yeah. Um, but that's the whole point of loving somebody. So you love somebody for who they are. Exactly. But like you said, people change. We all change. We all change whether we growing or we changing. So it's all about are we still gonna love that person or are we gonna move past that person? You yeah. know what I'm saying? And sometimes sometimes in a relationship we continue to love that person, right. whether they fell out of love with us because they have changed. All right, so with that being said, mm -hmm. do you remember when and how old you were? You know, other than that one, you okay. know, when you first, you know, with your heartbreak, how old were you other than that one again? Uh -huh. How old were you when you had, had your first heartbreak? My heart, actually, the person who actually broke my heart really for the hurt. first time was my father. So 
I was probably, I can't even remember the age. I was young mm-hmm. because he was the type of man who said he was coming and didn't come. And I would sit out all day <laughs> on the couch, staring at the window like this, oh. just waiting for him to come. So I probably was about the age of probably six or eight. No, seven or eight when I realized. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's coming. <laughs> like I, when I really, when it really start to hit, because you know when you're a child, you know they're like, oh, your father's coming. In. Some even my kids, like they kind of brush that off, like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah your daddy's coming today, or you can tell your child, oh, they're not coming. Something such happening, your child will brush it off and go play. But I think around eight or nine is when I really actually waited for him. Like I thought staring out the window for my dad was going to make him pull up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes it happened, sometimes it didn't. But he was the very first man who broke my heart. Mm-hmm. That's deep. Yeah, um, I can definitely relate to that. And if the, for people out there, you know, heartbreak is not just, it's not just, you know, a, a person that you're in love with, somebody that you're in a romantic relationship with. It can honestly be fan, friends, family. Another heartbreak, honestly, that I have, um, you know, you know, I was close to my, my friends growing up in high school, mm-hmm. um, was just how me and my friends ended up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, you know, with all, yeah. with all my close friends and stuff like that. I had a, a for those who don't know that, I had a, a, me and my group of friends were really, we were really close. Um, it's a few of us that are close now, you know, and, and throughout life, we all expect to actually, you know, grow apart from our friends that we might have grown up with and things like that. So that's not, you know, not, not talking on those small levels, but um, we actually don't talk at all. And I, not to say that there's any bad blood, because I'm pretty positive they don't feel like there's bad blood. I definitely don't feel like there's bad blood. But the situation of how it happened, it was very heartbreaking to me. Um, these, these people are really like my brother. Um, one of them actually lived with me. You know what I'm saying? My family took, uh, my family, t- you know, took him in as family. And like, that's what we do with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but when situations, you know, certain things happen in, in life, it, yeah, it just really shook me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I'm a very much into brotherhood. You know, I got an older brother um, and, and family. And so when I take you in and I say that you're family, like, you're really family. So I definitely can relate to that because. You know, outside of like, I think before, and that actually happened before my divorce. <laughs> so to be real with you, that was actually my first heartbreak. My friend, my, like you said, my friendship was actually my first heartbreak. I've had a lot mm-hmm. of situations, like I've had death and things like mm-hmm. that happen in life. Yeah. Um, and it's where like death don't really don't really hit me like some other people like death hit people hit me, especially with loved ones. But um, it was, it was a very deep connection with me and my friends. I would definitely always say that, and it's still always it still will always be there. Um, but that definitely. It rocked my world, shook it, um, and it made me look at things differently. A lot of times we, we used to heartbreak. It changes emote. you. Exactly, it'll mold and change you. And it could be for the good or the better, but it just also depends on the maturity of the person. You know. What do you mean by death doesn't hit you like everybody else? Um, mm. So my first my first death and funeral I remember was my grandmother, my, mm-hmm. my father's mother. So mm-hmm. for those who don't know out there, um, um, my last name is better. Um, I'm probably one of the last. Do better. Yeah, better. <laughs> um. <laughs> Him and I are kind of like the last people that we know of that has my last name. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, so my grandmother, she passed. She had breast cancer. And she was down with that for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, she passed when I was about six or seven. Um, that was the first that. funeral I went to. First funeral I can actually remember. Um, and the first time I can actually remember, like, and I said this to you before, mm-hmm. a lot of the times we'll have emotions, but we there's certain parts in life where we actually start remembering things in our life. Um and when we're kids, we don't really remember the first. We, I'm pretty sure we all can remember the first time we've actually felt love, felt happiness, like yep. genuine happiness. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Genuine sad. This was one of the first times I actually felt like, like sad. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like I wanted to cry. Um, I felt depression for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, at six. At six. You know what I'm saying? At six, I felt really depressed. Um, and I really, it was weird. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and because I was so young and I didn't know how to communicate that, I was never really addressed. So the way I, I cope with it was just kind of ignoring it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so yeah. it's weird when I mean, you do things like that because when I ignored it, I never really learned how to, like I said, address it. Yeah. So a lot of the times when people die and stuff like that, like I won't cry. That's like, yeah. I'm not gonna cry. I really don't show much emotion. Um, it's not like I show up the world or nothing mm-hmm. like that, but at the same time, I'm just not like, That's I'm not about to get, yeah, I'd rather, rather keep it to myself and just duck off for a little second and then, and, now, like it never happens, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, people pass and stuff like that. It's weird because I have somebody come up to me and tell me, like, hey, you know, XYZ happened or something happened, and I just won't have the type of reaction people I think you should have. Mm-hmm. So, okay. 
So it could be a bad or a good thing, depending on who you are, how you see the situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? What about you, though? I think, um, I feel like I kind of cope with death. I have cried, cried at funerals, cried at death or whatever. But I think my real serious, ah, I'm about to cry. <laughs> I think my first real dealing with death was um, my brother. My brother passed away this year. <sighs> he was shot. Um, <laughs> and that really, it took a toll on me. It changed me. I think that probably was probably the worst heartbreak to lose a sibling. But that was the first time, like, I really felt death. Like, like another half of me was gone. Um, and I was depressed. Like, everybody kept chopping on. <laughs> it's so funny because everybody had us depressed the same way. Like, we put on a happy face for everybody. Mm -hmm. Even though I had not left my bed. I had barely fed my kids. My daughter had to do all that. I hadn't washed. I hadn't done nothing. And my answer always was, I'm good. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Even though everyone was like, you need me to come over, make the kids dinner. You know, you need me to, you know, <laughs> wash your hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like any of that. Like I had some really, really, I had a great support system. But like you said, my first reaction was to just cut everybody off. And I changed. Like it changed me into... Yes. A completely different person that honestly I didn't even recognize myself. So, yeah, R.I.P. Trey G. <laughs> I love you, brother. Yeah, yeah, man. So, what is your coping mechanism as far as dealing with heartbreak with a significant other? How do you get past that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the first thing I did to cope then was the improper thing. I dated a lot of girls. You know that. Like I dated a lot. I was out running the streets. You know, you know, to somebody that, else to get over somebody else. Terms. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, that really didn't work. I'm gonna just be honest. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, because uh, the first, the first two situations. You know, when I went up to New York, yep. you know how the hell that situation happened. For y'all don't know, you know, a little extra situation happened. Where I, you know, me and my couple friends. Um, that was ended up really toxic. You know what I'm saying? Like. Um, but that was really because, you know, uh, there was a lot of deeper rooted issues with stuff. Um, not to say I wasn't over my ex, but there was things that, like, that came out of that relationship. Like, you come out of a situation that break your heart, like, you will be the type of person to, like, do things, like... You take it out on the next person. Yeah, on the next, the next person. person where you're exactly. not fully and, healed. Exactly. And it's not because you're not over the person that you were dating, you know what I'm saying? It's really because you, you're still you're mad. You're so angry. Yeah, you're so... Exactly. Yes. You know I mean? So you really just kind of just doing shit, you know what I mean? So that's one thing I did notice about myself. Um, it's like, dang, that that that's paid a lot of time stuff. Mm -hmm. you know but um, but now I'm gonna be very honest. With you. I to, to to be honest, I try to take time myself. Like even my research, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I try I do to take the same time thing. myself. It definitely um, it really stand by the boundaries and things that I'm trying to do now. Like a lot of people sit here and say, oh, I'm not gonna have sex with this person. I'm about to not do this. I'm not about to date nobody. This and the third. Whole time you got a sneaky link. Whole time you got somebody you still going out to dinner oh, with. You, you know what I'm saying? Too. Somebody you still texting and stuff like that. And it's like you really not trying to get over or fix yourself about things. So this this time around, honestly, like I'm really moving. You know, just staying to myself, trying to stay focused on things. You know, and just stay focused on stuff that's gonna move me forward. You mm -hmm. know, yep. like I got, I'm in school. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Got this going on. So I ain't really trying to do all that you know, extra stuff no more. I ain't got time for that. I'm kind of old what about you. I tried that. I tried moving on by getting under somebody else to get over somebody else. But like you said, it didn't work. It just caused more toxic and more problems. And you end up taking your egg out on that next person, even if they're a good person or just bad for you. Um, and then the first thing I was looking for was people that wasn't like him. Mm -hmm. They couldn't look like him. They couldn't have his hair color. Mm -hmm. They couldn't have his skin color. Mm -hmm. They couldn't like they could not live with oh, him whatsoever. I don't even think I yo, I didn't even think I was doing But that was like my MO until I got to the point where I was like, okay, well, how about I just take time for myself to heal? Because I'm just a whole open wound, mm -hmm. you know, and if I'm becoming toxic for somebody else. Where I know I can be a better person for this person, 
or I'm damaging another person. And that's yeah. something I did Sorry. not want to do. I didn't want to damage nobody else. So the moment I felt that way, I began to say, okay, let me, like you said, put my energy in something else. Put my energy in uh, my education. I, I enrolled in school. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I uh, became a dental assistant. I've been doing that for about 11 years now. That's my number. Yeah, 11. I've been doing that for I have been. Okay. I've been I in it. I don't, remember what you, I don't remember what you was doing before. <laughs> I was working at Target. Oh, <laughs> shit, nothing. I remember that time you told me you was just, just take naps and stuff. I did. I did. Yo, after you told me that, I started doing that at UPS. <laughs> that's smooth shit. So I was like, that's so smooth. I got to do that too. I'm tired. Take naps. Yeah. Smooth way to take naps. But anytime I knew I was really over that person is when I didn't miss them no more. When that missing goes away, I'm done. I feel you. I don't think it can ever really be a, a missing thing for me. Like, so when you know? When do you know? Like, with me, when do I know I'm done on some real stuff? Hmm. It's kind of immediately with me. I ain't gonna lie to you. Really? Like, uh, it, it depends you just on what, know? It just depends on what, what, what kind of caused the situation. Like, for me, I'm gonna keep it a whole being. I can't deal with, like, the entrust, the entrusting, mm -hmm. and, the, and the disloyalty. Let me say, I say entrust. That's not even a word. For it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the disloyalty in the situation, like, um, and not see, with my friends. It wasn't. It wasn't disloyal. I always say that with my, wasn't my friends. It wasn't disloyal. Um, to so that was like a lack of respect mm -hmm. and a lack of um, a lack of understanding of who I am and where who we are as men. You know what I'm okay. saying? Um, and then with my ex-wife, it was like, yo, it, it's you a loyalty thing. Like, it was yeah. a loyalty thing, and you didn't even care loyalty about loyalty. Loyalty is big for me. Yeah, like, you, like huge. You know what I'm saying? And I don't feel like there was ever any type of like real retribution for the the, the you know this loyalty you did. Mm -hmm. It was like you know it was a lot of things that went into that situation that mm -hmm. that it would change for me. Um, and you just knew you wasn't going back. Yeah, I just know. Like you know, once and I'm a big. I'm talking about like huge loyalty. It don't even matter if you could lie to me about some small stuff. Like I'd be like, I'm gonna be hot. Like, I would rather you tell me tell me the truth and just tell me what it is, communicate. Because I'm a bit very big on communication. Like, me too. And I'm going to say this. It don't even have to. You can say something to me and you can think it could be rude. I would rather you say it to me in the harshest way that you could possibly say it and then not say it at all or lie about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So for me, if you're not, if you're really not willing to sit here and, and respect, and the thing is, it comes out with respect mm -hmm. to you. You're about to lie to me. You don't mean you don't respect me enough to tell me the truth. Like, you don't respect me at all. So I can't. Ooh, I can't deal with that's that. That's deep. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I like that. And you don't respect me. So at that point, there's a lot that goes into the, 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 the disloyalty that comes with that. So once that's broken with me, and I think, and I'm going to be honest with you, just like you said, it's unfair to be with somebody and damage them. Yeah. I think it's honestly unfair to be with somebody knowing that they had to do so much, so much work work to be with you. Ooh, like, I, know, I know it's going to take a lot. Like, I know it's going to take a lot for me to trust you again. So what type of person would I be to sit here and make you go through all these hoops? Like, to me, that one is like a break. And with that being said, we're going to wrap this up because we're going to talk about Toxic the next show. You Facts. feel me? <laughs> ready for that one, guys, Don't forget cause... to hit us up. We are 811 Cousins Corner, mm. Patreon, YouTube. Facts. We out. Yeah. We love you guys. I'm <laughs> sorry.